March 1937 saw 16 different comic books with that cover date, the highest number ever with the modern comic book at the time. Detective Comics was the final publication of the entrepreneur Major Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson, whose comics company, National Allied Publications, would evolve into DC Comics, one of the world's two largest comic book publishers in the future. Wheeler Nicholson's first two titles were the landmark New Fun Comics and New Comics. His third and final title was Detective Comics. Wheeler Nicholson was in debt to printing plant owner and magazine distributor Harry Donenfeld. Wheeler Nicholson took Donenfeld on as a partner in order to publish Detective Comics No. 1 through the newly formed Detective Comics Inc. with Wheeler Nicholson and Jack Leibowitz. Donenfeld's accountant listed as owners. Wheeler Nicholson was forced out a year later. Originally an anthology comic in the manner of the times, Detective Comics, cover dated March 1937, featured stories in the hard-boiled detective genre with such stars as Cheng Lung, a Fu Manchu-style Yellow Peril villain, Slam Bradley from Siegel and & Schuster, and Speed Saunders, among others. The first editor was Vin Sullivan, who also drew the cover of number one. This comic was the first true DC comic book. This issue was the first production of two companies that formed the DC company. Most of the stories in this issue are racist towards Chinese people, and they are the villains in the majority of the tales. One such story titled Claws of the Red Dragon was written by Major Malcolm Wheeler. Another story of note is called Slam Bradley, done by Siegel and Schuster. The character looks very similar to another character they created, Superman. By 1938, Donenfeld bought out Wheeler's other books to become the sole owner. He then took on a friend accountant in his distribution business, Jack Leibowitz, as partner. The company was renamed National Periodical Publications. Leibowitz stayed at the offices and headed the accounting and creative part of DC, while Donenfeld handled and expanded the distribution through his company, Independent News Company. Don and Felt remained president of DC until his death in 1965, and Leibowitz remained in DC until 1970 and later moved to the board of directors of the Warner Brothers Company. Detective Comics is the longest running comic book title in history. Detective Comics No. 1, possibly the most important comic book ever published and one of the 10 most valuable collectible comic books of all time. This is the first issue of the comic series that gave the company DC its name. And it's one of the first comics devoted to a single theme. The cover character is a Fu Manchu clone named Chin Lung, drawn by Vin Sullivan. There's stereotyping of Chinese on the cover of Number One. Number One had certain highlights, such as Speed Saunders, a six-page story written by E.C. Stoner, and inking from Clegg Flessel. Elmer Stoner, or E.C. Stoner, was born 1897, lived until 1969, an American artist who worked as a commercial illustrator. He created the art for the famous planter's mascot, Mr. Peanut, and was the first African-American artist to work in American comic books. He produced pencil art for the first issue of Detective Comics, which helped establish DC Comics, and he worked for a variety of other Golden Age companies, such as Timely, which became Marvel Comics. He created the short-lived comic series Blackstone Master Magician for EC Comics in 1946. Detective Comics No. 1 also features Brett Lawton, a six-page story from writer-artist Craig Flessel. Bart Reagan Spy is a four-page story from Siegel and & Schuster. And they also gave us a lengthy 13-page comic strip of Slam Bradley. This is the first appearance of Slam Bradley, as well as the characters Shorty Morgan, Sergeant Kelly, Captain Frawley, and Rita Carlisle. March 1937 was a huge month in comic book history. Another important title began, The Comics, number one, debuted from Dell Comics. The new medium of this new comic book format was really taking off, so Dell followed up Popular Comics and The Funnies with their third anthology series, reprinting popular newspaper strips of the day. Tom Mix made his first comic book appearance, and Wash Tubbs and Myra North both began. This issue featured reprints from comic strip dailies and from recent Big Little Books. Some of the highlights include a Wash Tubbs humor cover, there's a four-page Wash Tubs story 
by Roy Crane. And Wash Tubs was an American comic strip created by Roy Crane that ran from 1924 to 1988. Tom Mix was featured in a four-page Western Frontier story. This was the first comic book appearance of the Western movie star. Thomas Mix, born January 6, 1880, lived until October 12, 1940. An American film actor and the star of many early Western movies between 1909 and 1935. Mix appeared in 291 films, all but nine of which were silent movies. He was Hollywood's first Western megastar and is noted as having helped define the genre for all cowboy actors who followed. Myra North, Special Nurse, is a four-page story from writer Ray Thompson with art by Charles Call. Ray Thompson created the newspaper strip Myra North Special Nurse with staff artist Charles Call in 1936. The daily strip about a crime-fighting nurse appeared in over 400 newspapers from 1936 to 1939, while a Sunday page appeared from 1936 to 1941. In 1945, he created the one-panel cartoon strip Homer the Ghost, which is also known as Homer the Invisible or simply Homer. The panel was syndicated by the York Herald Tribune Syndicate throughout the U.S. in until 1947. The third important comic book series to debut, March 1937, was Feature Books from David McKay Publications. This historic first issue was an all Dick Tracy comic book. It's deemed rare, very rare by Overstreet, which notes only five known copies exist in the world. Gerber assigned it the exclusive nine rating. The historic title feature book was the first American comic book to devote complete issues to a specific character. This was the first time this was attempted in the modern comic book market. The series started its numbering after two unnumbered issues, Dick Tracy and Popeye. The feature book series reprinted the popular newspaper strips of the time, such as Popeye, Dick Tracy, Little Orphan Annie, The Lone Ranger, The Phantom, and so on. The first 25 issues were oversized black and white comic books. Eventually it would go to the standard comic book size. The first issue was Dick Tracy with a lengthy 96 pages by Chester Gould of the Detective Mystery. It was later reprinted in feature book number four a year later. Feature books gave us a second no number issue called Popeye and the Jeep. A hundred page issue of Popeye considered very rare by Overstreet and not even pictured in the Gerber's photo journal guide. The 96 pages worth of Popeye stories were by E.C. Cigar and would be reprinted a year later in feature book number three. Western Picture Stories number two with a cover date of March 1937 would feature some highlights such as Will Eisner art and there is a mile high pedigree copy coming from the collection of Edgar Church and is one of the earliest comics he ever owned. The cover art is by Rodney Thompson. Will Eisner gave us a six-page Wild Tex Martin story. Detective Picture Stories number four was published by Comics Magazine, cover dated March 1937, featured a Rodney Thompson cover, and a seven-page Hammer Donovan story by Will Eisner. Famous Funnies number 32 with a cover date of March 1937, was the latest issue of the very popular series from Eastern Color, the longest running comic title in modern comics. It featured the first appearance of the Phantom Magician. Cover art was by Victor Pesmino and featured the characters Joe Palooka and Sam Smithers. The very first crime comic series continued from writer Rex Collier with pencils by Kemp Starrett, War on Crime, and featured the character John Dillinger in a four-page story. Queenie appeared in a one-page story from Jerry Iger under the alias of Bob Bliss. And there was also a one-page Bobby story from Jerry Iger. Buck Rogers was featured in a four-page story from writer Philip Francis Nolan with pencils by Rick Yeager, the only sci-fi story in the issue. And Ham Fisher gave us Fisher's History of Boxing and Joe Palooka. It's believed that Al Cap was the actual artist on both of these under the alias of Ham Fisher. An Adventures of Patsy was a two-page story from writer Mel Graff. The adventure story featured the first appearance of the Phantom Magician as well as characters Patsy and Thimble. 